so we've been working with the precepts and really, I think, understanding how these all orient us to becoming more safe, more safe with ourselves and with others and in the world. And really, ultimately, about the importance of stewarding our energies wisely. Right? Stewarding is defined as conducting, supervising, or managing something. So how do we mindfully steward the energies that arise in these mind, body, hearts? Because when we look at the precepts, I think it's clear. We see the range of energies that can lead to harmful behavior if we're not mindful. All the forms of ill will and aversion, anger, aggression, various forms of wanting and desire, restlessness, impatience, greed. This third precept, the commitment to not cause harm with sensual energy, really points us to a dimension of the energy of wanting in lust and sensuality. And really asks us to take responsibility for how that energy moves from in here out into the world. And to steward energies mindfully, we need to have an actual relationship with it, right? And of course, with sensual energy, I think that's really difficult. There's that extra loading in our society around lust and sexuality, any form of desire can be tied to a lot of shame and judgment and aversion, which makes it really difficult to connect with and relate to mindfully and openly. And it can be difficult sometimes to relate to mindfully because it's a very powerful aspect of desire, sometimes a very intense energy that kind of takes over easily without us being aware of it. And yet we know that if we're not mindful of it, this energy can easily cause harm in the world with ourselves and others, even in subtle ways, right? These subtle ways that I think we can objectify others, intrude upon another person's personal physical space. If I remember that this is really about taking responsibility for an energy that arises just like any other energy, it really helps me. Because we have been looking at and practicing together for years how to relate to our energies mindfully, to anger, fear, sleepiness, restlessness. This is our practice and has been our practice. And yet, as Lee talked about, in our culture, we really don't learn to relate to this energy mindfully. Either we're taught the approach of shaming, suppressing, pushing away, disconnecting, denying, which we know is just another form of aversion, right? Or we're sort of trained in total indulgence, just letting ourselves be pulled by being taken over, swept into this energy. And this practice, everything about it invites a middle way, right? Neither pushing away nor grasping. And I think in a lot of ways, we already know how to do this. The Buddha offers a very simple and clear instruction in the Satipatthana Sutta. He says, there is the case where there being sensual desire present within, a monk knows with understanding, there is sensual desire present within me. Or there being no sensual desire present within, he knows with understanding that there is no sensual desire present within me. The sutta goes on to say that the monk understands how sensual desire arises, how it ceases, and how it is let go or set down. And again, I feel like this simplifies what can feel like such a heavy and loaded topic. This is mindfulness, a mindful relationship. We know with understanding when an energy 
like sense desire is present, when it's not present, how it arises, how it passes, and how it is not clung to or is let go. And in the sutta, the same formula is repeated for the remaining hindrances, the energies of ill will, sloth and drowsiness, restlessness and anxiety, and uncertainty and doubt. So what are the components of practicing and developing this mindful knowing and understanding? I think, again, we know this quite well. I find it helpful to use Michelle McDonald's RAIN acronym, R-A-I-N. Very simple. We recognize what's here. We allow the experience to be there, accept it, investigate with kindness, and practice non-identifying, non-identification with the experience. So if we kind of look at each of those, right? Again, this is what we often practice. Recognize what's going on, the, the willingness to slow down, to notice the felt sense in the body, mind, heart, and begin to turn toward that. And as we allow and accept that it's here, we see, oh, okay, this is what's happening. This is here. It's part of my experience. We begin to investigate with kindness, right? It's like this. Oh, it's like this in the mind. It's like this in the body. We begin to strengthen, hopefully, our holding environment so that it's spacious and kind enough to hold and be with the intensity of that energy so that we can actually watch it and investigate a little bit, but with care. And that non-identification, I think, is so important with this particular energy. We don't have to define ourselves by a moment of desire arising, right? Or even just the same as with a moment of anger arising. We see it arise and pass like all phenomena. And I think the non-identification also helps us notice the habitual relationship we tend to have with sensual desire, right? Those second ripples of attachment or aversion. And so to turn toward, be with, to know and understand and see our relationship with sense desire, this allows the pause, right? We can begin to slow down, not be so driven by it. If we're not caught by it, then the grip it has over us lessens and loosens. We get some space. And if we're not caught in aversion to it, the shame or denial, the grip of aversion loosens. And we can be with our own bodies and our own experience with a little more comfort and ease. And we then have choices. This is that freedom born from mindful knowing, mindful relationship. And I, I believe that that choice, that freedom gives us the discernment needed for that mindful stewardship, which might include restraint. Often in these precepts with sila practice, there's this element of restraint, not suppression, but really discerning how to act in relation to this from a skillful place, which sometimes includes not acting, right? We really want to get to know how this lives in me. This is how the energy wants to move out. Is that wise? Will that be of benefit to myself and others? Could that cause harm? So I really invite us all to begin to consider, you know, what's your edge with this? on and off the cushion, because certainly this particular energy can arise more off the cushion. And our mindfulness practice here can help us build that understanding and knowing that will support us in being more mindful with it out in the world. And so is the edge even just maybe noticing and beginning to turn toward the energy itself? Or is it more feeling into and softening 
the habitual relationship you have with it when it shows up. And either way, my invitation, my encouragement is to go slowly and gently. That I step in rain, that gentle, kind investigation, I think is really important to do in very small, small amounts. And then come back to the anchor of the breath or sounds or supportive phrase, neutral territory, neutral territory. Sensual desire is not neutral territory at all. And because of that, because it's that energy, it can be um, very easily can make us unsteady and ungrounded. And so with any investigation, we want to notice if that's happening and come back to something that's going to be a bit more holding and easeful. Right? May I be with this moment as it arises and passes. May I be kind toward myself. May I be well. Or slowing the breath, again, coming back to sounds, sensations in the hands, back to the holding environment. So let's really rest our hearts on the intention to practice mindfully relating to the energy of sensual desire remembering, trusting how much we know already how to do this, how to turn toward, hold with interest and curiosity, not pushing away, not getting attached or lost, but that middle way that really allows us to become more skilled at knowing, understanding, and stewarding what's here so that we can become safer beings in the world and with ourselves. So... Thank you. Thanks for your attention.